Hi, I'm Donna Davis, and uh, Richard Cole couldn't make it in today, but we have some exciting news for you today. Uh, we're, you're going to be able to meet the contestants, uh, the winning people in our Coles contest, our photo contest. We have an interview with one of our winners, and we have a live interview with another one of our winners. So, And then we're also going to update you on where things are with the Coles contest because a lot of people, they love to see the votes and the comments and that sort of thing, but a lot of our participants we know really want to see if their picture makes it into the calendar. And we had such beautiful submissions. It was so competitive and it's just been so tough for the people at Coles to select just the number of pictures that can go into the calendar. So. Uh, that's coming up. Our announcement about when you'll hear that is coming up in the show. First of all, we want to introduce you to Tim Bowser. His picture took first place in our 2025 Coles Calendar Photo Contest. And Tim joins us by Zoom. Hi, Tim. Uh, so first of all, Tim, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about how you took this picture. No problem, no problem. Um, so I have a pretty cool setup. Um, it's basically just me shooting out of my window. And I waited a very long time to try to get these birds locked in. So I just set up that um, the feeder, um, like the smaller blue feeder. And I literally just set it up and the Eastern Starlings um, decided to come in and have fun. <laughs> particularly like to have the starlings there because they can eat up all your food. Tell me how you feel about attracting the starlings. It's funny, um, especially for my smaller birds, I kind of feel bad because they are really aggressive and I've kind of had a theory on it, which is to try to set up a smaller tray feeder away from my main um, bird feeder for the smaller birds and then try to set up something large enough for the starlings because they're going to come regardless. Like there's nothing I can do to get them to go away. So. Might as well have fun while they're there. <laughs> we'll tell you, this is the first time a starling has made first prize. That has to be exciting. It is. It is. It is. And it's. And it's. I think the to um to see the like how they'll literally come in and out. Um, you know, whatever the time of year they'll come in, they actually have that be the number one. It was pretty cool on my end, especially just the moment, just capturing that moment. It was. It was amazing. I, when I look at that picture, I think of her like yelling at him, like, feed me. Yes, yes literally. And it was actually, a, it was actually three of them. We only saw one in the picture, but there's another set that are sitting on top of the, um, the feeder. And I kind of wish I got that too. But yes, they are, you, I can literally hear them through the window, like almost as if they're saying, hey, you don't have anything in this feeder. Come help me out. <laughs> I love that mouth. I mean, and I let you had some great comments, right? You did have a lot of comments about like, you know, uh, the wife wants to be fed and things <laughs> like that. Tell me what it's like as a participant to see so many likes and comments and people like just loving your work. Tell me a little bit about that. I just, I'm really just glad that, especially for my friends who know me from like the commercial photography community, I'm glad that they got a chance to see like my passion. Like I just love nature. So I got a chance to like let them see the other side that they don't typically get a chance to see. So um, the comments were funny. A lot of my friends are very sarcastic. So I knew the comments would be sarcastic. I'm glad they weren't too over the top because my, my my people are very funny. But um, <laughs> it was it was just great to see so much love. There's a lot of people who were sharing it, who were saying like, this should be a National Geographic. I just really appreciate just a lot of the love that was shown toward it. Yeah, you know what? I love everything about this. I love, I always say that there's really kind of two elements to the pictures. One is the the emotion, the story. It's very easy to get the story here, right? Like she expects him to feed her. And it, it, so it has all that emotion in the story. I also love when the lighting and the background is just right. And, I, and you really did such a great job of, of really capturing you know, all of those things. I love the background. I love the colors and lighting on the male's back. You can just see oh, yes. all those colors on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was, was something that I really worked on. I noticed, especially in the area that I'm in, um, right when that like 12 to one o'clock um, sunlight is just super crazy um, bright, but it casts a little mini shadow on the back of the bushes and it's just a perfect ratio of light. 
and um i've been taking pictures for years but just make sure that timing is right and then making sure the space between the feeder and the bushes just made everything come out of the perfect shot Great job. Congratulations on that. And we also want to show, I do want to tell our, our audience right now, please feel free to share this. We are going to show all of the uh, photos that made the semifinals. And we want you to share it, to make comments, that kind of thing. You can even ask Tim questions while he's on with us. And he might be able to answer in the comments when after he's on. But let's take a look at, we're going to look at some of your other photos. And we're going to show those. I don't know if you, you won't be able to see them, but I can tell you, you know, about some of the little, it looks like, oh gosh, this is a little nut hatch. It looks like eating some special feeder food. It's oh, so yes. cute. Oh, yes. I think the um, the next, probably, probably one of my favorites, because that was probably the first bird that I believe came to this feeder setup when we moved into our new space. And um, they are so fast. That's a very fast bird to photograph. So we'll go through this and just, and and you won't be able to see what we're showing. I may be able to tell you some of the ones, but just in general, I want you to tell me a little bit about some of the techniques you use and what what you like to shoot and why you like to shoot like wild birds. Do you shoot rabbits and things like that as well? If I can, I think right now, I think birds, rabbits, pretty much a lot of nature is just very fast paced. So I just like being able to kind of like freeze the moment for the stuff that we always see. Like we always see these things from afar, but to get a chance to see them up close, like you mentioned earlier, like just the colors on the back of the starling, which I don't, I've never seen. You always see them flying, but to see it live, um, just to see a version of it, um, see how the birds interact, just to, to see those funny moments. I just, I love it. So, um, especially just in once again because they are just a just super just fast flying in and out of that feeder being able to freeze that moment i just i love capturing that as much as i can yeah and alex we can go ahead and just go through some of the pictures that he entered so all of these were pictures that were entered most people did the same entering several different ones so we can just go through these pictures um oh the cardinal in the snow he's got that one up now that is oh, yes. great I he, love that. That was my. That was like one of the. I was trying my best to find a good snow photo. That was probably one of the craziest ones to find. But I always loved that one in particular because I didn't think that the birds would come out in the winter. So to see that was like amazing. And I oh forgot, yeah, I sure I got yeah. He almost looks like he's got frost on his face. Yeah, right. we can keep going through them. And I and so your little goldfinch photo mm -hmm. made the semifinals. How did you feel about that? I, that is probably one of my favorite photos. And it's funny because out of the voting, I felt like personally, I felt like the photo was a better photo. Um, but <laughs> but people people love the, I believe they think they love the colors on the starling. But something about the goldfish, it just, goldfinch, it just felt regal, just real regal, just sitting up top. Um, the background was perfect. It was right around that, um, like fall time. So the, the trees weren't as, as, um, the blooming in the background it was i love that photo it's probably my definitely my second favorite photo although there was another one that didn't get picked that i like a little bit better which one was it <laughs> my bluebird so the oh. baby bluebird sitting in a tree with that spot of light right on the eye i love that photo um i will tell you this sometimes it's a matter of you know there's so many different types oh, of uh, i mean there's so many entries that are the same of bluebirds and maybe cardinals oh, yes. and gold yes. benches so so yeah now, i will tough. i will say and, and to that point like i'm i was I, i've always seen you all post on the social media page like like people to post their good photos so when i saw the selection like the final selection i was like everybody's been holding back there were some amazing photos in that mix i mean that was just everybody's photos were amazing I, agree with you. I just couldn't get enough of you know i got a chance to put them all into a video and to really look at them and i couldn't get enough of looking at them so many beautiful colors <laughs> so many great photos tim thank you so much for taking the time to join us and congratulations are you excited about your gifts oh yes is my, that my your gifts you have happy. behind you yes i have some back here i just got it this morning my birds will be happy trust me they are they are ready for me to feed them. I feel like I've been neglecting them a little bit, trying to get from everything. They'll let so, you know, won't they? they? I think they will tap on the, my mind, I believe, are tapping on the window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will be like, get out here and give me some food. It's so I cute. Know. I love it. It's more fun than anything. Thank you so much for joining no us, Tim. And congratulations. No Appreciate it. Thank you, Doc. Okay, thank you.
So Tim won our first prize, but we also had a second and a third prize. And the same person won our second and third prize, and that's Albert Sant. And we did an interview with him as well. My wife gets cold products, and she would see this flyer and stuff, and she got this notice about the calendar contest, and so she said I should try to enter it. We went through some pictures, and we picked out ten pictures, and we sent them in. That was pretty exciting for me.、Uh, I've never done this before, and so to, to do it and have three pictures get in the in the semifinals, I thought was pretty neat. It was a sunny day, and I was out at the park where I took the picture, and I saw all these wax wings were flying in and out of the berries and stuff. And so I set myself up. I have a really long zoom lens, and so I was able to get back far enough where I didn't disturb them. I just got lucky with that one. I, I took several pictures to to get the one where he actually caught the berry in his mouth just right when he swallowed it. I saw the goldfinch on the thistle that was pulling the thistle seeds out. Such a pretty combination of colors and everything. Once again, I had my long lens, so I was able to stay back far enough that I did disturb it while it went along and pulled its thistles and ate its seeds. Just pretty neat. So people I don't know from all across the country that like it and everything, and and、uh, it makes you feel like okay, I can do this. I want to go out and get some more, and I've been out shooting since then. <laughs> we have a lot of feeders outside that we fill. A lot of feeders. We feed、uh, we anything from jelly feeders to、uh, suet feeders to seed feeders to tray feeders, because all the different birds that like all the different feeders do a lot of coals bird seed. We get we we do get a lot of good quality birds here. We have the the color suet. I know we have some of the hot hot stuff. So these are the mealworms that that you know some of the mealworms that we feed them. And then on our feeders, my wife put、uh, branches sticking up above the feeders, so it gives the birds a chance to land before they get to the feeders. So it gives me a chance to take pictures of them in more of a natural state than than on the actual feeder. But、uh, I think this next year I'll probably get more birds on the feeders uh, pictures, uh, uh, so I can send those in too. I use the longest lens that I can.、Uh, I try to keep the The sun to my back,、uh, so that、uh, you have better exposure on the on the birds. I try to I I try to predict、uh, where they're going to be going, so that I can maybe be prepared for something that might happen. And then also,、uh, I I try to shoot、uh, with a bigger area,、uh, so that、uh, it gives me. Better opportunity to crop in and compose a picture at a later time. I used to try to zoom right in tight all the time and stuff, but then you don't have any room to to change your picture later on. I'm always happy when I get a good picture. Congratulations to Albert as well. So interesting, and we love to hear from people who just love to feed the birds as much as we do. Uh, we do want to show you what the prize packages were. Our first, second, and third place prizes. So, first place, yeah, you saw all that food behind Tim, and he's got some new feeders, and you know, just so much joy that he's going to be able to get out of feeding his birds with all of this. Three hundred fifty dollar value. And then next, we're going to show you,、um, yeah, second prize. So Albert's going to get all the second and third prize. He's got lots of different、uh, products to choose from, and, and the Titan tray, just a great feeder,、um, the terrific tube feeder. So a two hundred fifty dollar value. And then he's also got that third prize package worth one hundred fifty dollars. And more feeders with this, and of course more seed. So we really appreciate everybody entering, and we do want to just once again remind you that on our August first, on the August Facebook Live, Richard will be here, and we will be announcing then which pictures are going to make it into the calendar. Which is why so many people. Enter the contest. Feel free to make comments and to share out this broadcast. It's really fun. And now we want to go through and show you a video that has all of the semifinalists in it. And then I'll just read the names. There are also the names that are on it. 
hopefully, yeah, I'll read the name. So this one was Linda Robbins and Brandy Doolittle and Becky Kemp. Another one by Becky Kemp. So many people entered several times and made, uh, you know, so many of their pictures. Another one by Becky. This one is so beautiful in the snow with Tate Graham. And another one by Tate. And still another one by Tate Graham. And this one again from Becky. And I love this theme with the pumpkin in it. And this one by Becky Kemp. And Marilyn Diaz, who enters so often, and we do appreciate that support year after year. And Ron Foltz, the Cedar Waxwing, again, Linda Robbins, and Albert Sunt. This picture also was a winning picture. There's Marilyn Diaz with the hummingbird. And Albert Sunt, again, this picture had a lot of likes. Didn't make it into the top three, but it had a lot. And Marilyn Diaz, again. Ron Foltz with this little picture of a singing bird and Albert's picture that made uh, second prize. And this is Berlene Pullen with a female cardinal. And Tim Bowser's goldfinch picture, the one he liked so much. And this is by Kelly Crone. We love these winter photos. And Renee Stuckey. And another one from Renee Stuckey and another Ron Foltz picture, and another Marilyn Diaz, and Kimberly Fowler, and this is another Berlin Pullen, Morning Dove, and Berlin Pullen with the Cardinals, and Kenny Faye, Kenny Faye enters the contest many times, Becky Kemp, another photo by her, and this one, I can't read the name on it, I'm sorry. Uh, these are also, when, when they're vertical like this, it's just hard to get the name. And it's Tate Graham on this one. And Kenny Faye with a cardinal. And Lydia Lively. Carolyn Cowden. And of course, Tim Bowser with that first place photo. And this is from Lee Moss. And Kelly Logos, Lee Moss again, and Trudy Flowers, and this one is another one by Trudy Flowers, and another one by Trudy Flowers, and still one more by Trudy Flowers. Oh, two more <laughs> at least, another one by Trudy Flowers. And this one's by Michelle McNeil. And Michelle McNeil again. Another Michelle McNeil. And Heather Malmberg. And Lauren Ross. Another Lauren Ross. We had a lot of cedar wax wings this time. And Deborah Stallings. This goldfinch on a sunflower. And Carol Cowden. And Kathy Diamantopoulos, not sure if I pronounced that right. Again, another one by Kathy. And still another one, such a bright, beautiful color there. And this is Harrison Levy, or Levi, not sure which one. Another one by Harrison. And this is by Kelly Crone. That even looks cold. And Anita Di Nicola. another one by Anita. And Lydia Lively, with this little bird being fed. And another Anita Cola. And still another one by Anita. And Marilyn Diaz. And that is all of them. And when we leave you, we are going to show you more of those. I just can't get enough of seeing those. Um, but. On to other things in the show. This is also an intensely hot time of the year. It's only going to get hotter. So we wanted to bring in a, a video by Richard Cole, the founder of Coles, where he explains how important it is to make sure that you get water out for your birds.
because Richard talks all the time about how you need to supply water for the birds, even in the winter. They need, oh, need to clean their feathers, and it actually does help them stay warm to be able to clean those feathers. But So I got uh, a beautiful little fountain bird bath, and then my birds weren't coming. And then Richard said, be patient. They will come to you. And then after a while, I said, they're still not coming. And he says, well, maybe you should move it. So we never ended up moving it. And literally for four years, they finally started coming. So now it, it's popular. It's as if one of them used it and the rest of them were like, oh, that's, that's what that's what for. for yeah. But yeah. you say, don't leave it for four years. Do not do like Donna did. Go ahead. If it's not attracting birds after a while, change the placement of it. Yeah, I would probably change it before four years ran out. Right. Yeah, just, right. you know, if, if it some goes, I tell people with birdhouses, if you go a year, maybe two years, and the birds haven't taken it, just move it to another place, put it on a different tree, put it on the side of the house, do something different because it's just not a great location. Although it may take four years and somebody finds this, that one's for me. But the, the, the bird bath, absolutely put it where you can get a hose to it without any trouble. I even have, next to my bird bath, a hose that I keep just for it. It's, I think, maybe 12 foot long. I just, it's no hole, I cut the whole end of it off. So yeah. it's not in a way, it's not a lot of trouble. It's just laying there, and I can get right to the bird bath with it. And you're right. If you don't make it where it's not a lot of trouble, yeah. you, won't you won't do, do it. it. And that's probably why it took us yeah. four years. We left it up yeah. on our deck. Yeah. So I don't think the birds were as comfortable to come to the deck. Yeah. We didn't have cover like what you're talking about. But now that they've started to come, it's great because we can see them. Yes. And it's just beautiful to yeah. see them out there. But they still don't come while we're outside. Yeah. But we can watch them from our kitchen window. Yeah. And it's so cute. So definitely get a yeah. source for them. And does, does the water need to be like we saw in the one photo it was moving but your no. bird bath it's not right no it doesn't it doesn't need to move I don't it's care, nice huh? if you get one of those because the little gurgling sound is an attraction to the mm -hmm. birds they hear that like a little babbling brook mm -hmm. that will help bring a bird around to check it out mm -hmm. and i think they they like that noise but it doesn't have to be So great advice, as always, from Richard Cole. And Richard has a ton of videos on YouTube if you ever want to look up uh, Cole's Wild Bird on YouTube for all of your birding questions. Um, another thing Richard is passionate about is making sure that during these really hot times of summer that we're all being very diligent about changing out that hummingbird nectar. He did a video about that as well. We did have somebody make a comment on one of the YouTube videos that they had left the hummingbird uh, nectar out. Uh, it was the red nectar. They left it out for two or three days and the hummingbird stopped coming. And I had just thought, you know, maybe in these really hot temperatures, you just have to keep changing it out, you know, really frequently. Yes, and that's with any, any nectar. Uh, if, it, if you're looking at, as we are here, right about 90 degrees, you put uh, any mixture of sugar in a fluid outside without it being, you've got opening, so it's, it's open to anything that comes up to it, and hummingbirds bring bacteria stuff, and that's fine. But after some period of time, let's say two, three, four, five days, you've got a problem or a building problem where this stuff, start, the bacteria in there start developing, and when they get too, too much of them in there, that's not a good thing. Uh, the birds can handle some of it. It's not really a problem. But if you see the, the, the nectar getting a little cloudy or something, just change it out. If right. you're finding that's happening and you haven't thrown a lot of weight, don't put as much out until you have more birds. Right. So uh, it's just a good thing to keep your eye on it and expect it with any nectar out there. If it, if you have a nectar out there in hot weather and it's been out there for a week and it hasn't changed or anything, it's probably got preservatives in it. You can right. go back and check your content. Yeah. Uh, it, it's assuredly got something in it to stop growth of bacteria and, and things in it. So, and that's not something you really want. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been such a fun show. And as mentioned previously, 
we are going to have an announcement on our Facebook Live in August about which photos made it into our 2025 calendar. Such beautiful photographs, and we're so happy to have Tim and Al on the show today. Thank you for watching, and thanks for sharing out the video. We are going to leave you with that video with all the names and on the photographs of the people who made it to the semifinals, and congratulations to everyone.
Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to share it.